Today we are going to talk about having a natural, healthy pregnancy without doing some of the more conventional things and a little bit of baby prep and of course we will spend some time in the kitchen as well. In this video, as I patiently await the arrival of baby number five, I'm gonna just take you through my day and talk about some specific things that I do when I am pregnant. And it's early in the morning right now, so we're just gonna start with my morning routine. I actually got to sleep in this morning because my big kids had a sleepover at grandma and grandpa's house, so it is just, the toddler and I, and my mom will take care of feeding the big kids too, so I don't have to make a big breakfast. John and I went out to eat last night. I ate a ton of food. I'm not even that hungry, so I'm just going to start the day how I usually start it, but I'm not going to have a big breakfast. So as I go throughout my day, I will just talk you through the things I am doing and why I'm doing them, and the first thing we're going to start with are my morning drinks. I always have two morning drinks. My water, which I jazz up a little bit, and my coffee or tea. So I've got a bag of tea. I was out of tea, needed to get some more. Baby's about to arrive, and this is the tea that I will drink postpartum too. Coffee, I'm a little bit touch and go with when I'm pregnant. So for a healthy person, Caffeine consumption in moderation can actually be very beneficial. I know this is controversial. Some people say caffeine's horrible. Some people say it's good. Well, I have done the research and, and I've come to the conclusion that it can be very beneficial, like I said, if you are healthy. But for me and for anyone, especially with any kind of metabolic dysfunction, Caffeine is probably not going to be your friend, and that's what I have experienced. For the first time in my life, I've experienced caffeine intolerance. Now, it's getting better. So actually, for the past year, I've been able to have some caffeine. There were a couple of years where I was able to have no caffeine. However, leading up to the birth of this baby and my postpartum experience, I am backing down away from the caffeine, and I'm just going to go ahead and proactively switch over to my go-to alternative, which is this tea. I'm gonna be making it right now. It is called Not Coffee Tea. I'll link it for you guys in the description. A friend actually gave me some to try when I was experiencing infertility and said that I, I think I need to give up coffee, caffeine. That's one thing I need to do to try to fix this. And she's like, ooh, I have just the thing for you. It's tea, but it tastes like coffee. You can still make lattes, have your warm morning drink, but with lots of health benefits and none of the worries from caffeine. So I've been drinking this tea off and on for a few years now and absolutely love it. This is going to be what I drink in the mornings throughout the rest of this pregnancy, which there's not too much longer, and in my postpartum season. As you all know, I am a big fan of the egg yolk latte, and that is what I'm whipping up here. I've made it for you guys so many times, but it's just so good. And I think just last week or the week before, we made homemade marshmallows, so that pairs really well, because if you're using egg yolks to make your morning latte, then you have leftover egg whites and you can make marshmallows. And I do have both of those recipes on my blog. And as always, they will be linked in the description for you as well. So this tea, um, it's like a coffee substitute. It, I brew it just like I brew coffee. I mean, the directions are on the bag, but I just brew it in my French press. And then my jazzed up water I was telling you guys about, this stuff is just magical. <laughs> like I don't get Charlie horses at all. And I feel so great. I have a lot of energy and I really do attribute it to, um, you know, replenishing electrolytes. I do exercise. So I sweat. <laughs> Maybe not every day, but a lot of days. So anyway, in here, it's just a little bit of lemon juice, coconut water, salt, a dash of maple syrup, ice, and water. That's it. But I have a couple big cups of this every day. And I think it's delicious, number one. And... Number two, like I said, it, it just keeps me very hydrated. Okay, so first thing, 
as far as pregnancy, but this is really whether I'm pregnant or not pregnant. Either way, my morning supplements. And there's not really a lot of rhyme or reason for why I do some in the morning. I just space things out throughout the day. But almost all my supplements are whole food based. So it's just like if I were eating these foods, but they're like freeze dried form in powdered form. So as you saw, I have beef liver, which is like nature's multivitamin. Uh, it's not enough alone for pregnancy, but it's great. I have mushroom blend, lots of health benefits in mushrooms. I have an oyster blend. And once again, you can eat all these things in your diet. Um, but I don't always get these things in my diet and I just like having them in supplement form. And then magnesium. So magnesium is really, really important for so many bodily functions, but especially for people who do have any kind of thyroid dysfunction, magnesium is going to be a critical one for you. And another thing is coffee can um, ca cause your magnesium to be low. You can be deficient in magnesium from drinking coffee. So just something to think about. But I think most people could benefit from a good quality mag. So I need to put together like a supplement list. I just don't know where to put it because this is crazy, you guys. But <laughs> you can actually... I don't want to say get in trouble, but like Google doesn't like when you talk about certain things on your blog if you're not a certain kind of licensed professional. I just need to figure out where to put this stuff, but I'll put something together for you guys and link it that'll be like supplement list or something, I don't know, during pregnancy. But moving right along, my little toddler woke up and it's time for his first breakfast, like immediately. You know that if you have toddlers. They have to have like a first breakfast, a second breakfast, maybe a third breakfast. And the first breakfast is always just something really easy like a banana or a fruit or something I have that I can just hand him really quickly. And then he just follows me around the kitchen as I do my chores. So now I am doing something I don't do every day. I just do this when I need to. I'm preparing a tea blend with bulk herbs. So... I'm making Nora tea. I've talked about this with you all before. This is a wonderful tea for all stages or all, you know, during the childbearing season, whether you're trying to conceive or just wanting to, you know, keep your reproductive system and hormones healthy or whether you're pregnant or postpartum. Uh, Nora stands for nettle, oat root, red raspberry leaf, and alfalfa. And I'll talk to you in a minute about why those particular herbs. I'll give you some, some properties here. But what I do is I order these herbs in bulk and I mix up my own blend. Because if you were to, you can buy Nora tea pre-blended, but it's going to be like something crazy, like 10 times the cost. So this blend that I'm making here will last for quite a while. And then I will just dip into here to make a gallon of this Nora tea, but it's really an infusion because you're not, you know, brewing it in hot water. You're just letting it sit at room temperature. So I make a gallon of this Nora infusion at a time and drink a quart a day. So I will link my favorite source for bulk herbs in the description for you guys. I've been ordering from the same place forever. So I'll just link all these things, the nettle, the oat straw. And I think I said oat root earlier. But you know, if you've been following for a few weeks, that the pregnancy brain is in full effect and I'm losing my mind, but it's nettle, oat straw, red raspberry, and alfalfa. I'll link all that for you, as well as the proportions on how to whip up a quart of this infusion. And, you know, if you've been watching this long, you probably figured out the reason I do all these things is because I don't take a conventional prenatal. I did in my first two pregnancies. I followed all the doctor's orders, in fact, to a T, and I did not have good outcomes. Um, my first baby was very early, had to spend time in NICU. Looking back at pictures of myself, I had a lot of symptoms of being unhealthy, just like swelling, and I could just tell, but I followed the instructions, and you know, I've since learned better, but we'll, we'll get back to this. We'll chat more about the tea, but first, I'm going to take a quick break to tell you about the sponsor of this video. Since we are on the topic of preparing for baby and postpartum, I wanted to take a minute to tell you about Earthly. Earthly has been my go-to for alternatives to allopathic medicine for a few years now. They have a huge selection of herbal remedies that support health naturally rather than overriding the immune system or just masking symptoms. So whether you're looking for 
herbal supplements for health maintenance or for something specific like a skin issue or any kind of internal issue, Earthly has a solution. One of my absolute favorite things about Earthly is the review section for each product on their website. My sister and I have joked in the past that we need like a weekly screen time report for time spent just scrolling and reading reviews on Earthly because it's truly amazing reading all of the testimonies from herbal supplements and remedies. Producing 100% clean natural products is at the heart of Earthly's mission. So they never use any compromising ingredients. And to make sure that's actually happening, everything happens in house. So all of the products are made, packaged, and shipped directly from Earthly. They don't outsource at all. So you know exactly what you are getting every single time. I have not kept over-the-counter drugs in our home for years now, and praise the Lord, we have not needed antibiotics for years. I absolutely know that allopathic medicine has a time and a place. I used to be a nurse and I worked in critical care with really serious injuries and illness, and I wouldn't hesitate to use that level of care if we needed it, but we've just been very fortunate that everything that we have dealt with has been something I felt like I could manage with lifestyle and natural remedies. We did try essential oils for a while. I kind of got really into that, but then I realized that they are so, so potent and they can actually be dangerous when you overuse them, which is really, really easy to do. So I have since transitioned to mostly herbal solutions and never looked back. The dosing information is right on the label and I know everything comes from a trusted source. I'm not an herbalist, but the people at Earthly are herbalists so I can trust everything that they send and when I need something, I just grab it, read the label and go. Okay, so all of that blending up the herbs for the tea and you know dumping it in a gallon jar and taking my supplements. It might seem like a lot, but as you can see, I did that all while my, my well, I say coffee. This is the not uh, coffee tea, which I'll link this to. I get the chocolate conniption version. It's so good. I did this all while that was brewing, like what, 10 minutes for a little morning routine, which I know can seem impossible if you've got a lot of little ones running around, like to take 10 minutes to take care of yourself in the morning. But it, it's just something that I've learned I have to do. Because as I was saying, I did follow the doctor's orders for my first two kids. I went to nursing school. I did trust the medical system. I had no reason not to. I just wanted to be a good patient and I thought they will take care of me. And if I need something or the baby needs something, they'll make it happen. <laughs> you know, they'll fix it. But like I said, I learned better. It was actually not <laughs> totally until after my third, I kind of started learning a little bit, you know, with everyone along the way, I would get maybe little hints of crunchiness, like being interested in cloth diapering or breastfeeding. But really it wasn't until I had three kids that uh, one of my kids got an injury from a doctor's visit where they did routine administration of uh, medications they do. And as a nurse, I didn't know that there were side effects, but this was a very severe side effect, uh, enough to where we had to go to the emergency room. And this was at the hospital I worked at, but I was totally dismissed. They were treating like they wouldn't put it in the chart that my child had been to the doctor and gotten that treat medication that day. And I was like, well, that's, that's significant. Um, so, you know, that really opened my eyes and I just started learning. I started asking a lot of questions. I started asking like, why, you know, I, I'm, I'm relatively healthy and why are my pregnancies not ideal? Why can I, why am I not carrying babies to term? I actually had started asking that before I had my third because I did have him in a birth center, but it just furthered those questions and, you know, pushed me further down the line of, of the crunchy, so to speak word. It's not really crunchy to me. It's just like natural, I guess, <laughs> not relying totally on pharmaceuticals when there's other ways um, and by the way, I'm, I'm making my bed here just as I'm chatting with you guys. And the black sheets on my bed, they stay on my bed. Those are grounding mats. I've showed you guys those before and talked about them, but I, I'm showing them again because I just get so many questions when I do. And you guys uh, watch the documentary I recommend and love it. And several of you have ordered them and said that you love them. So I'll link them again, but they are pretty 
fabulous. The science behind them is pretty cool. If you're into science, I am. I'm very into research. Like I said, I did go to nursing school. I went through, um, completed my bachelor's, most of my master's. I did drop out when I decided I didn't want to do that. <laughs> but I did complete like master's level research, and that was my favorite thing. I love research. So the research behind these mats is it's pretty neat. Just Just check it out. But anyway, back to pregnancy. You know, my wheels were just turning, thinking, why? There's got to be a reason because my specialists that I go to tell me I just can't carry a baby to term, but they can't give me a reason. I don't have a diagnosis. They say I just can't carry babies to term. And so I figured it out on my own and I don't really do anything the conventional way anymore. That does not mean that I'm scared of the hospital or doctors. I think they have a time and a place. Um, you know, if I fell and broke my leg, I'm going to the emergency room. I'm not going to take an, an herbal tincture or anything like that. If one of my children has a serious injury, we're going to the emergency room. So I believe in that. I really do. But I don't believe that pregnancy is in and of itself an illness. It's not a disease. Now, there are illnesses that can um, come about during pregnancy, but a lot of times, a lot of times, those are lifestyle related and we just don't know it because we have not been educated. As women, we've lost a lot of the wisdom, you know, over the past century or so, the wisdom that would have been handed down from mothers and grandmothers, we've lost that. But anyway, so I, I've got my routine now. I don't take the conventional prenatals. I take care of myself. I put together my supplement routine. I'm happy with it. It's mostly either herbal or whole foods based. And, you know, it's, it's good. This will be, Lord willing, you know, the fifth, well, third baby that I've, I've carried to, to term. So my last two went over 40 weeks, perfect births, um, no hemorrhaging, no complications. And I told you I would talk a little bit more about the Nora T. So let's chat about that. I'm actually just going to read a little bit from a blog post I used to have on this and I need to get this post back up. Like I said, I just need to figure out how to do it without getting like flagged for trying to be a herbalist when I'm not because you know, I'm not an herbalist and they really want you to have credentials when you talk about it. But here on YouTube, I can chat about it. So let's talk about nettle. So nettle is an astringent, a diuretic and a, a tonic and a hypotensive. So it can actually lower your blood pressure or just stabilize your blood pressure. Um, it's full of minerals its astringent properties make it very effective at preventing hemorrhage. So this is something that you want to be drinking leading up to and even, you know, during labor and postpartum to prevent postpartum hem hemorrhage. It's very, very effective. So look into that. Look into nettle tea or nettle infusion for preventing hemorrhage. Okay, we'll get back to the rest of the herbs because I am going to make something really good and kind of talk you through it. I was just mixing up a bottle of um, my all-purpose spray cleaner. I get that from Earthly as well. I just really love Earthly. They have so many things. And I've told you guys this before, but I, I love that they're affordable. Uh, you know, they don't jack the prices up to try to be like an MLM or something. They just keep it direct to consumer, which is really, really nice. Now we are going to be making another yeast recipe. Don't worry. We're going to make some sourdough in this video too. There's always like a little bit of both going on in my kitchen because I don't discriminate. You know, baking is baking. You just find what you like, what works for you. And I, I think having the tools to do both yeast and sourdough, it's so great because you don't always have the time for sourdough or maybe if you have health reasons for only doing sourdough, I don't know, you can just do whatever you want, but you don't have to be dogmatic about it. This dough that I'm working with is like a magic dough. It's a magic instant yeast dough and it's a good all purpose. You can make it into a loaf of bread, into like really good burger buns. Um, and right now I'm actually making it into strawberry cinnamon rolls. I guess there's no cinnamon, but strawberry rolls, does that <laughs> cover it? Does that sound good? Um, so you just prepare them like normal cinnamon rolls. And the filling is just strawberry jam, brown sugar, and butter. Then I'm going to cut these. And I so I had actually, maybe earlier you saw like the big bucket of dough on my counter because I was making burger buns. And um, I took half of that. I mean, it was a double batch, so I took half and made it into buns, and then the other half I made into these strawberry rolls. I'm actually filming this, like, the week before Valentine's Day or something, and so pink everything is just what we're we're going with. All right, so midday, I showed you my morning supplements. Midday, I do my iodine and selenium. Now, this is specific uh, for my thyroid. However, 
it is actually recommended that um, all women of childbearing age do, you know, mind your iodine and selenium intake. It might be something you need to supplement, but especially if you have any kind of thyroid dysfunction, which mine is like su what you'd call subclinical. So it's not something that they would even treat with medication if I were interested, but it's something that I notice. Like I know how I feel and I've done my blood work and I know it's right there borderline and I know I need to be proactive. So I'll link those supplements. Um, I'm <laughs> do, I do a lot of research before I choose a supplement. So I'm, I'm pretty confident in the ones I use. I really like them. Okay. These are the burger buns from the magic dough I was talking about that can be turned into like anything. I forget what we were even having this night. Gosh, maybe this was, no, we started out the morning and I had roast on the counter. So I think this might've been, I made roast today, but anyway, we're going to focus on the dough in the background, which is the strawberry roll dough. So I prepared it and poured like a fourth to a third cup of cream over this dough. And that is really the key. Anytime you're making a yeasty or sourdough cinnamon roll, just like pour some cre heavy cream over it before you bake them. I just wanted to show you those burger buns, by the way, they look really pretty. The recipe will be in the caption for you guys. And here are the strawberry rolls. Now for the icing, I just mixed up a butter, uh, kind of like a buttercream icing. A little butter, a little butter, a little powdered sugar, and a little bit more strawberry jam, just to be extra with the pink for our Valentine's theme that we are continuing. Um, my daughter's 10. She's all about it. She loves it. I love that she's so girly, but since I'm not, and I, I tend to lean more toward just not, just very like serious, uh, not pink or anything like that. But I, I make an effort for her, like a special effort to do girly things for her because it's important to her. <laughs> and so I hope she remembers. All right. We're going to fast forward a little bit. I showed you the one first delicious recipe. That was a yeast recipe. Let's make some sourdough. If you watched my video just a couple days ago, you saw that I was working on mastering pink sourdough. And I got it down, but I figured out that when you use beetroot powder, if you use just a little bit, it will produce a loaf that is really pretty on the outside, but it almost just turns brown on the inside and looks like a whole wheat loaf. It's not really pink. If you use enough beet powder to make it pink, then your loaf is going to have a very closed tight crumb. Um, my loaf was still soft. It was fine, but I didn't get any kind of open crumb at all. And that's okay but I like a little bit of like just a little openness in my crumb. So we're moving on and we're going to try purple sweet potato powder in today's artisan loaf and see how this goes. And spoiler alert, I actually had to try this a couple times. We have uh, like two St. Valentine's parties we're going to this week. <laughs> so I'm just making all the things and I'm actually taking all these things, like all the things you've seen me make the last few days, the cookies, the breads, I'm going to take them with me to the parties. And, you know, so I was like multitasking here, doing fun projects in the kitchen, fun projects on the blog and taking stuff to parties. Okay. This was the Nora, uh, infusion that I had sitting at room temperature that I am just straining now. And I'm pouring it into quart jars. They will be ready to go. I will drink a quart a day. Okay, let's take another little break for me to tell you about some specific things I'm doing to prepare for postpartum. Baby will be here before I know it. I'm getting so, so close and I'm so excited. So I went ahead and stocked up on some essentials for me for the postpartum period and for baby as well. And one thing I wanted to show you guys is this tincture called ease the ache. So if you've had more than one or two children, you know that postpartum cramping is a thing. It exists. No one warned me about this. So when I had baby number three, it took me by surprise. Postpartum cramps can be more intense. They can be not for everybody, but they can be more intense than labor cramps or contractions. You know what I'm saying? They can be really, really intense. However, there are ways to lessen the intensity and help them pass more quickly. Two things that have really helped me because this will be my fifth baby, so this will be the third time that I get to experience these lovely postpartum cramps. Uh, the first thing is nothing cold, so no cold liquids 
or nothing cold to eat like ice cream. I know that sounds good a lot of times like right after you give birth, but that will actually make the cramping worse. This is something that is known cross-culturally. If you travel the world in other cultures, they never give postpartum moms anything cold. It's always warm drinks like warm tea, uh, broth, soup, just warm stuff at least until those cramps pass. They don't last longer than a few days, so it's not that hard to do. The second little trick is to use a tincture with cramp bark in it. And this Ease the Ache tincture does have cramp bark as well as a few other ingredients and it is simply amazing. I just keep it in my little bedside cart and every time that I feel a cramp coming on, put a little bit under my tongue and it really does ease it pretty much instantly. Two more things that are a little bit specific to my needs. I've shared with you guys, I have a little bit of thyroid dysfunction. It is getting better, but it's still something that I want to be cautious about. So I did go ahead and get thyroid support and this postpartum balance tincture just to help with any crazy hormonal fluctuations so that I can hopefully avoid any really, really unpleasant thyroid problems this time around. And this will be the fifth baby that I have nursed. My first baby was a NICU baby, but eventually after a few months, we did get the hang of it and I learned to nurse. So I have nursed all four babies, getting ready to nurse the fifth, fifth baby. And these two things I'm just keeping on hand just in case I need them. It's milk flowing salve and breast balm. Like I said, just in case. If you've ever nursed a baby, you know that those first few weeks can be kind of unpredictable as far as how each individual baby is going to latch and take to the breast. The last thing I have here is this baby balm, which using cloth diapers, we don't really have to worry about diaper rash, but it's so great for anything. Any little bumps or irritations on baby skin, it is just perfect. If you are interested in herbal remedies, do not take my word for it. Go check out Earthly's website. I will put my link in the description below and read some reviews. Check it out. They have so many resources for educating yourself if you're feeling intimidated or if you're new to all things herbal. And when you place an order with Earthly, all orders in the U.S. over $50 ship free. And you can use my code HOPEWELLHEIGHTS10 to get 10% off your order. So I just want to thank Earthly for sponsoring this video. I've been an affiliate with them for close to two years now and absolutely love them. All right, while I do some nesting and packing and sorting here. Let's get back to the Nora tea. I told you about nettle and that it is key in preventing postpartum hemorrhage. It's such an amazing tool, but don't take my word for it. Definitely do your research. I also wanted to go over the rest of the herbs really quickly. So oat straw is great for feeding and strengthening the nervous system. So it's especially great when you're under stress. And even though, though the female body is meant to, you know, carry babies and breastfeed, it does put stress on the body, so wonderful herb for supporting the body through that. As far as raspberry leaf, it strengthens and tones the uterus. So, you know, when the time comes to give birth, your contractions are stronger, more effective, and it helps to prevent hemorrhage as well in that way. There's a little bit of controversy about drinking red raspberry leaf tea in the first trimester, but it's not something I worry about. Once again, you do need to do your own research, though. And last but not least, we have alfalfa, which is known as the father of all foods. It is very nutritive. The body can assimilate it very easily. And it also promotes healthy blood clotting and eases morning sickness, supports digestion. It is a galactagogue, meaning it you know helps with milk supply, improves babies' vitamin K levels, and balances blood sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol, it just does so many things. So you can see that this combination is very, very powerful. And I have found it to be more effective than taking a conventional, well, when paired with all of my other supplements, more effective than taking a conventional prenatal. Okay, so something else I do in pregnancy, but honestly, just pretty regularly because I love dates, is eating dates. So especially in the later part of your third trimester, eating a few dates every day can really help make your uterine muscles respond um, better to oxytocin. There are oxytocin receptors in the uterus. So, you know, that's, it just becomes a more effective system resulting in more effective contractions. Plus dates are just delicious. I really like them with peanut butter. Just fabulous. All right, now let's get to our sourdough. So, you know, if you watched the last video, you saw that I was trying to master the pink beetroot sourdough. I've got the purple sweet potato sourdough going here. And these loaves were beautiful. I used a lot 
of beetroot powder and sweet potato powder, I think like a half a cup in each of these loaves, trying to get like a really bright, brilliant color. And the loaves actually turned out really good. I was pleased with them. Like I said, it was more of a closed crumb. I don't even necessarily want to say dense because they were very soft and light and airy. Uh, you'll see here in just a minute, the breads were flexible and you know everything you would want in a good sourdough loaf. But I did end up figuring out that the purple sweet potato does powder does not lose its color when baked, unlike the beetroot powder, which does turn brown inside of a loaf. So I actually did one final attempt after this, which you'll see here at the end with um, a purple loaf that had very little sweet potato powder. And I'll show you that, but this is the pink. This was the final pink loaf from the beetroot powder. And like I said, it's a closed crumb, but it's got a good shape, good texture. It was delicious. It had a little bit of an earthy flavor when you use this much beetroot powder. And here was the first purple loaf that I made. Also delicious, more of a closed crumb, good shape. Very, very purple. But I decided to go, that's the super purple loaf, <laughs> and all these recipes are on my blog. But I decided to go for a lighter purple, almost like a purplish pink. And all I added was two tablespoons, just 20 grams of purple sweet potato powder to this final Valentine's loaf. So many loaves for Valentine's Day for my sweet little daughter. But uh, this one was it. This was the ticket. Look how perfect. Got a big ear on there. The shape looks great. When I cut it open, you will see that the crumb was just fabulous. So, you know, for a good Valentine's loaf, I think my favorite ratio was this right here. Just two tablespoons of purple sweet potato powder made the prettiest light purple, almost pinkish loaf. And there it is. All right, like I said, all these recipes will be linked in the description for you guys. They're all on the blog. I hope you have a wonderful St. Valentine's Day. Hope you have a wonderful Lent in preparing to celebrate the passion of our Lord this Easter season. Thank you all for watching again this week, and I will see you next week.